Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. I just read, it's 1 Samuel chapter 17, it's the story of David and Goliath. One of the biggest classics of all time. I don't even need to go into any explanation on how huge or well known this story is. I think even if you're not a Christian, unless, unless you have lived your life in a culture where there is just no access to the Bible, you've heard this story before. At least in general, you know, the giant Goliath comes out onto the field, challenges the Israelites, David steps in, and he, you know, he um, uses his sling, slings a rocket at Goliath, hits him in the head, and Goliath falls down. And David wins! And we teach it in our Sunday schools, the kids hear it all the time, just well-known, well-loved. And as I was reading it, it just kind of occurred to me, how often do we really take into consideration what these verses mean? God is absolutely behind and apparently has no problem with people dying. Now, if you've been on my channel, you've heard that before. But if you're new to the channel or new to Christianity, or maybe you're a non-Christian, you want another excuse to hate Christians, don't hate me for saying that, guys. If it's in the Word of God, we should know it, and we should believe it, and we should be able to defend it. So let this be a challenge for the believers who haven't really thought about this. Let's go down to a verse that I never heard this when I went to Sunday school. I didn't grow up as a Christian, but even though I heard this story, I never heard this particular part of the story. Let's do, jump down all the way to verse, well, no, back up, back up to verse uh, 49. Then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone, and he slung it and struck the Philistine in, the, in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead, and he fell on his face to the earth. Now, I don't remember that kind of detail from my Sunday school teacher, but I think pretty much everyone knows, and even kids know, Goliath's the big bad guy. David's the small good guy. He uses his sling, throws a stone, and he wins. What you, what I never heard in Sunday school, and what I don't think a lot of people, believers or not, have really thought about, are the verses afterward. Verse 50. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. Well, that's not the end of the verse, but let's just stop there. He killed him. God's okay with people dying. God's okay with people getting killed. That is the will of God sometimes. Have you really thought about that? Judgment. Death. Destruction. For those in sin. It's part of God's will. It's part of what he does. And you don't really hear about that much from Christians. And let's just, uh, let's continue with this little avenue. Verse 50. By the way, this is going to be a little bit longer than three or four minutes, but I didn't want this to be a Sunday sermon where it's really, really long. I could preach an entire sermon on this, but I wanted it to be something a little bit shorter and a little bit more concise than a Sunday sermon and yet a little bit longer than it, my daily messages because it's such a popular story. And this isn't a vantage point that you normally hear about. Uh, people who have read the Bible... Well, let's be honest. Most even Christians don't read the Bible nowadays. Let's let's just be honest about that, all right? Let's just be honest about that. Most Christians don't. So I'm going to make this a little bit longer than normal because I want to go into a little bit of detail here. And I want to get to the heart of the matter and the heart of this message. I mean, I am, and I am getting there. But it's important to understand that God was totally okay with this. God backed up David. You read earlier in the chapter... Everyone's saying, the Lord be with you, the Lord be with you. David himself says, let's back up to verse 45. We'll get back to verse 50. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And I think a lot of people probably stop, especially in Sunday school, with this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. They probably stop there. It's not like the kids brought their Bibles or actually have opened them up to an actual passage. Or maybe they're reading a kid's Bible, so you only get part of the story, not the whole thing. Let's keep reading, shall we? Back into verse 46. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. 
then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. You also hear that end part right there. That's a pretty popular part as well. So yeah, I'm going to kill you, and all the carcasses, all the dead people of your camp are going to be eaten by the animals today, by the time I'm done with you. And that's how this assembly, the Lord's assembly, will know. And that all the earth, everyone who's left alive, after all, you're dead and being devoured, those who are left alive will know that there is a God in Israel. Kind of the same thing with Egypt and the ten plagues. <laughs> hear about the ten plagues, you don't really stop think to process that tenth plague. God killed all of the firstborn in Egypt, regardless of age or gender? Come on! <laughs> Back down to verse 50. How was halfway through, so I'm going, to keep, I'm going to keep going from where I was, but there was no sword in the hand of David. Verse 51. Therefore David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword, and drew it out of its sheath, and killed him and cut off his head with it. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. I have no problem with David killing this guy. I have no problem with God taking the lives of all the people in the land of Egypt. And I think most people would agree, especially during wartime. Now the thing with Egypt wasn't technically wartime, but the slaves were trying to break free. They are trying to get out of Egypt. It was kind of sort of war-ish, and most people don't think too often about killing others during wartime. It's an unfortunate and sad event that happens. And even if you go to Romans chapter 13, verse 1, it speaks about the duties and the authority that governments have. And I would just like to read that briefly. Um, I'm not... I don't like war, but at the same time, I'm not pro-war. I understand it as a necessary evil in this life. And I, and I will definitely defend my own family and my own household to the death. Um, my own or the one attacking, if need be. Romans chapter 13, verse 1. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. Now, obviously, there are some bad rulers and there are some bad people in leadership. Uh, the Pharisees, in, during this time, they tried to have Paul killed. He still wrote this. And I don't really need to remind anyone about our own history and Adolf Hitler, prime example. God doesn't necessarily approve of everything that ruler does. In fact, the ruler, the Philistines were over Israel at the time, if you read the previous chapters, which admittedly I haven't covered. Do some research for yourself. Not, and Google is your friend. You can find a Bible translation, hundreds probably of translations via Google. The whole Bible, hundreds of times over. Check it out. It's a good book. But God doesn't necessarily approve of everything the ruler does, but the fact that, like, the Philistines were the rulers over Israel, and God himself may oppose those rulers. But that doesn't mean they got into leadership without God knowing and without God allowing it. And since God allowed it, there's some responsibility there. And more directly to the point, sometimes God authors and issues the death of said people, like Goliath. With that in mind, here's, let me drive this, let me bring this whole thing home. Um, I'm devoting much less time to the positive than I am the negative. I feel kind of bad about that, but I feel like the positive can be summed up fairly quickly. While these things are necessary evils, that doesn't mean God hates the people under judgment. It's my firm belief that God didn't hate Goliath, he didn't hate the Philistines, nor did he hate the Pharisees, nor did he, did he even hate Adolf Hitler and the Nazis. God didn't hate those people. He loved them. Jesus died for all of these people. Old and New Testament. That's another theological point. We can hop into that perhaps some other time. That's not the main focus today. But Jesus died so that anyone and everyone can be saved. God isn't just for his people and against his enemies. God wants his enemies to become his people. The heart of the Father is love. That's what God desires. What he wants from us is to admit that we need him to admit that we're sinners, to love him back. But God will honor the decision of the unbeliever. 
God will honor the, the decision. He won't honor those who disobey him, but he'll honor the decision of those who disobey him. He'll respect that decision, and their sin will result in death and hellfire afterwards. That's not what God wants. But if that's what we choose, God will say, okay. And I and he doesn't like, he doesn't, he will try to persuade us otherwise. He'll try to bring us to repentance. He'll try to show us the error of our ways. But we can persist in the error of our ways. We can continue to stay in the wrong. And God, while pers trying to persuade us and trying to show us what the right way is, he's not going to force us. He's not going to make us do the right thing. And he honors that choice of disobedience and unbelief all the way into the pit of hell. Even at the very last minute, he'll, he'll say, okay, you chose to disobey me. I accept your decision, so depart from me. You never knew me, and I never knew you. But that's not what God wants. God doesn't rejoice when the wicked die and when the evil are slain. He rejoices when sinners come to repentance and come to truth. That's the ultimate desire. And there is coming a time when that judgment will hit. Um, and there comes a time when the firstborn of Egypt are slain. There comes a time when Goliath has to be struck down. That time comes. My encouragement is that God wants you in heaven with him. He loves you so much. That's why Jesus died for you. So today was a bit long, but that, this story is so popular, it was really important for me to get this point out. God is okay with killing. God is okay with sending people to hell. Not that he likes it, but he accepts our decision to not follow him. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. It's been a heavy topic, but one that is sorely important and needing to be addressed. So here I am addressing it. I love you very much, and God loves you even more. And may he richly bless you today.